Hey there folks and friends, Connecting Dots here. It's Fukushima Day 1205. Today's date is June 28, 2014. Fresh off the press, not sure if you caught this, but if you do Google News on Fukushima, they're all propagating the exact same lie. Yeah, I call it a lie because it's lying by omission, folks. Uh, the latest study here finds Alaska fish safe. Should you trust them? Absolutely not. If especially, you know, just stick around here to the end of this video. I'll present enough evidence to let you know that they're absolutely lying they're twisting the numbers, uh, they're th not doing proper testing, lying about the type of fish, uh, just it just keeps adding on and now they want you to spend six hundred dollars they want a six hundred dollar donation by the way I found a place for half price so I'll be leaving you a link for that one so you can test your own food here because they're not even testing the food that's the other thing they're playing a quickie on you they're, they don't want a six hundred dollar donation to test food hell no they want you to test the water the last thing that's going to be showing high levels of radiation so the story goes on here and that's published June 27 2014 if you didn't notice up there and it goes on to say here that the FDA results confirm from federal and state and international agencies that seafood in the North Pacific and Alaska waters pose no threat. The agencies analyze uh, well several Alaska fish species harvested by commercial sports and subsistence fishermen that migrate. Oh, there are fish that migrate, several species. Is that true? Absolutely not. I can't believe it. They would actually say that stuff because wait till I, I pulled out all the evidence. It's there's no doubt about it. These guys are absolutely lying. Oh, look at this. Cool innkeeper, he's raising money to test waters at the crowd. Remember that. This is interesting. Okay, so, you know, just a month uh, in November, sorry, a little while back, more than a month back, November 2014 here, 2013, I should say, we had another test that came out that showed no radioactive contamination of clams and fish. Now, if you go read that story, they did tell you a little bit of truth here, and it's interesting because they said that the State Department of Health had tested limited amount of fish and shellfish to look for radioactivity and absolutely truth that, that they weren't lying about that because you found out they tested albacore tuna caught off the test uh, the waters off the pacific west coast and, and they only caught one before the fukushima disaster and one after can you believe that yeah and in addition they went on to say that they caught one salmon and one steelhead that's three fish folks and they're telling you it's a-okay Good thing they put an S at the end of clams, because I know at least they tested two. And I'm not saying that to be sarcastic. I wouldn't doubt it if they tested two clams, just so they could put an S on that thing. These people are absolutely corrupt. It continues on because, you know, just less than a month later, December 2013, because that previous article for, was from November 2013, here we are in December 2013, we find out that China has banned U.S. West Coast shellfish imports. Yeah, but, but the, the official stories here is elevated levels of arsenic and toxin. Do you believe that? I'm not sure. Who do you believe? Do we believe the Chinese officials? Do we believe our media? I'm not sure, but I, I've got some articles here from local stuff, so you can connect the dots and find out that they are all full of shit. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. So the Loki Fish Company here in Seattle, Washington here, published the story back in January 7, 2014. And again, he's full of you-know-what because he says the no elevated levels. Well, of course there's elevated levels because it went from nothing to a something. And that's elevated, my dear friend. Not only does he lie about that, but, you know, it very misleading stuff here because he tells you all seven stocks and you're thinking, great. You know, he's gone out and checked a lot of different fish here. Turns out he's wrong. You're wrong. He, that assumption, if you read on, it was only seven samples. Seven samples. Yeah, and, and five of them registered uh, no levels, uh, but two of them, yeah, they registered trace levels. Oh my God, can you imagine that? He tested seven, He and two of them were found to, be, uh, find, uh, found to have trace levels of radiation. He's saying, you know, it's all... It's all safe, folks. Don't worry about it. Jeez, I wonder if it has anything to do with the fact that he sells fish. Of course it does. No one, you know, it's his business, his livelihood. You know, and you went on read a little further here. If Cash, Coast Reporter, report, reported on the Sunshine Coast here that Health Canada had re released some results here that were done previously. So this story here came out in February 21st, 2014. And it goes on to see here that... Uh, Health Canada tested 28 fish samples that were provided last year, so that was the year before by the DFO, and no radiation from Fukushima was detected in any of the specimens. Okay, not only is it, you know, only 28 fish, but they can't find any, and this guy 
you know, he went out and did it because he, he earns his livelihood selling fish, and he wanted to let everyone know it's okay. So he took his time and went up and pulled out and did some testing on these <clears throat> seven fish to let you know, hey, it's all right because only uh, two of them res registered trace levels, and these guys are doing 28 and they can't find it. No, very, very sad here, folks. So you know you're being misled because if you've been paying attention, just on April 29th, 2014, you know, it was published here that Oregon tuna, well, the levels there, they had tripled after the Fukushima meltdown. Okay, now, this uh, Delvin Nelville here, uh, this uh, in nuclear department engineering, I got to admit, and most of it is what he talks about is downplaying, but he is very honest about this, you know. It, it's been found that the, the, there's absolutely, um, he can't say that there's absolutely zero risk by eating the food that has very small amounts of radioactive <laughs> nuclides in it because even consuming small amounts of radiation, yeah, it has a potential risk of causing cancer. That's right, folks. And even in his test, what? He only tested 26 fish, and those fish were caught between 2008 and 2011. Imagine that. Oh, yeah, and there was others caught between uh, the incident and 2011, but he doesn't tell you how many. Watch this. If you go read an uh, environmental uh, science and uh, technology article, they talk about these 26 fish, and they talk about the, uh, the ones that were caught between 2008 and 2012. They were analyzed for season 137 and 134, and it says that both of the fish that were caught in 2011 and several of the fish, that's 10 out of 17 actually, while, while they exhibited increased activity I don't know what to say. How come these guys can find it in 26 fish, yet, the, you know, you had the, the government over here, they tested 28. No, nope, nothing, folks. Come on, let's use our common sense on this one. Anyways, if not, if you're, you're still wondering, did it come here? This story was put out here. It was from the Norwegian Air Institute, and they talked about an air filter that was placed over 10,000 kilometers away from Fukushima, and it still picked up these hot particles. Okay, and it goes on to talk about hot particles, a significant part of radioactive releases. We have ongoing releases, as I'll show you in the articles near the end of this story. Now, this latest research here, boy, I'm about to blow a big hole in this one, I'm telling you. Unbelievable. Just released, as you can see on the date, June 27th, that was just yesterday. They talk about, you know, these, these fish that were sampling, they insisted they were sampling fish that were several species that are known to migrate. Absolute lie, folks. And I'll also show that these standard techniques that are routinely used by the FDA to evaluate food safety, baloney, hogwash. So continuing on here with that same uh, recent study here, again, they're saying it's, you know, it's safe. Don't worry about it, folks. You can eat it. And uh, yeah, and several fish were tested. And you know, again, nothing was found. No detection at all. Oh, there's the Cook Inlet again. You know, he's he's mentioned again in this story. Imagine that. You know, because he wants to raise money, right, to test the water. Yeah, that $600 Woods Hole Scam Institute that I told you about a little while back. You don't want to test the water. The water is going to be the last place where you're going to find significant levels that are going to be alarming to anyone. You want to be testing the fish, and you want to be testing specific types of fish. That's why when I read the article, several fish species, I figured, oh, right on, they're onto something. No, they're not. If you go read the articles, and I'll post everything down below here, you go find out it's an absolute joke. So there's a press release, and I'm thinking, okay, there's got to be some good info in here. Absolutely nothing. It's the same garbage. You can hit the space board, uh, space um, key, and, and pause this video. Absolutely nothing good in here. I downloaded the PDF file. Absolute garbage, and I'm thinking, what's going on here? There's only... Polonk, halibut, sablefish, that's it. Three, several falls in the category. Yeah. Can you believe it? This is the crap they're pulling on people. They didn't even test the salmon. There was no tuna, no albacore, no bluefin. Wait till you see the studies I've got. Oh, these people are very evil and very corrupt. I've just said it, corrupt because you're misleading people, okay? Right down to your DIL. Yeah, wait till you see what I've picked up on that. Anyone who was following this stuff way back then, we knew that these people were out to kill, and this latest study shows that these fish species are all 
non-migratory. They all live within the Alaska range, fishing range, okay? I knew it when I saw the species that these people were lying, the sable fish too, they don't go anywhere. Okay, the, the, the levels of radiation, for him to pick it up, the halibut, would have to be, the wall, waters would have to be elevated enough for the fish that would be dying that he would consume, the sea life, because he eats dead fish and crabs and stuff. He's a bottom dweller. They have to be contaminated and he would show uh, um, elevated levels. That's not taking pl place yet. What you have to do is catch a migratory fish, which are the ones I'll be showing in a little bit here. So uh, as far as that three six hundred dollar test, here's a cost test here for three hundred fifty dollars per sample. They test food, they test water. It's up to you. The links are down below. If you don't want to send me a donation to help me out, because I want to buy a Geiger counter, I, can, I live right on the coast here. I'm about a minute from the shoreline. I want to do my own testing of seafood, kelp, water. I'm buying. I'm trying to raise some money. If you don't want to, there's a link there. I'll leave it down below. You can do your own testing. Now back on May 30th, 2012, the Associated Press posted a story here, and they were talking about the fish, the tuna that had been caught, bluefin tuna. They were 10 times more radioactive. I've talked about the story. The same one was published on the BBC. Um, I don't know what to say. All 15 samples. All 15 samples. Yes, sir, Rebobs, there are 10 times more radioactive. I'm not making up this stuff. It's up to you to, to keep informed on what's going on and pay attention here. When they're letting you know that they're picking it up in the water, you got to be careful. We have an ongoing meltdown. I've talked about 70 million becquerels spewing out every single hour. 400 tons of highly radioactive water being spewed into the ocean every single day. But 70 million becquerels are being spewed into the atmosphere. So this famous little story is where it gets really good on is the FDA and the APA the same? Absolutely not. Go read why. I'll, well, I'll click it for you so you can figure it out and hit the space bar and read it for yourself. So basically the EPA has a certain level. They only allow three picocuries and the FDA has a level of 4,700. Not the same. Drink your milk, die radiation, drink your water, you'll live a little longer. But I talked about Obama changed the levels of radiation for Americans drinking U.S. water. After 30 years, he elevated the levels. So it used to be 1 in 10,000 people. That was the acceptable death rate levels. He raised it to 1 in 23. So if you drink water for 30 years, you have a 1 in 23 chance of dying of cancer. That's acceptable? I don't think so, folks. Come on. Let's not get fooled by these people, okay? It's very important. Now, here in BC, this is a recent study here, March 12, 2014. I'm not making up this stuff, okay? This is from the Simon University. I've, I've showed this study before here, okay? Simon Fraser University have checked out five soil samples here on Kilby Provincial Park, okay? Keep it, uh, very close attention to what he says because he says he was surprised, okay? And he says it means that there are still emissions. Of course, I know that. You know that. You got to tell your relatives. They got to watch this video. It's being transported. There's air pollution. 70 million becquerels. This is according to TEPCO. Okay, Tokyo Electric Company, that's their own figures. Are they telling the truth? I don't know. But I do know that this is spewing out all the time. And you got to be careful because it talks about this model suggests that in 30 years, the cesium-137 levels in the whales will exceed the Canadian guidelines of 1,000 becquerels per kilogram for consumption of seafood by humans. That's 10 times the Japanese guideline. That's in 30 years. Do some math on that one. So in five years, you're 15 times, uh, sorry, in 15 years, you're five times over the limit. And half of 15, yeah, do the math. Okay, so I left a video here a little while back, Fukushima Day 1191. It's on my forum, connectingdots1.com. Go check it out, please. I think you should share with everyone. There's a bunch of other links. Once your, your relatives get interested and they wake up to what's going on, they'll say, okay, I need to get informed. Now, uh, as I mentioned before, if you're a subscriber of mine, fat chance you'll get your upload notifications. Google is, um, YouTube is owned by Google. They censor me. Uh, I'm not into the AdSense. I do all my stuff for free. So you can connect with me and, and subscribe, but chances are you won't get your upload notification. It's the same thing if you connect to my other ch YouTube channel. Uh, sorry, Connecting Dots 3. Same thing. Uh, chances you won't get it, folks, but you can uh, always see me at uh, connectingdots1.com. Uh, that's where I post all my information on a daily basis. Hope you enjoy the information and share it with one you love. Take care.